Hey, this is Mike Herrera. You're listening to Magnified Pod. This is a yelling podcast. From poking at you to plans and everything in between, this is Magnified Pod, the only podcast that discusses culture, religion, politics, and the entire discography of everyone's favorite left coast punks, MXPX. And we're back. Ho, ho, ho. I'm Andrew. <laughs> I am John slash Santa. <laughs> and this is our podcast. Yes. Hey, hey John. Hey. Merry Christmas. Hey, man. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Cheers. It's yeah. been one hell of a year. It has been. Uh, we This will be our last episode of the year. Yep. While we retreat to various parts of the country to mm-hmm. see family, uh, get drunk in other parts of the country, probably uh, open presents, enjoy the holiday festivities, go to our annual liberal war on christmas meetings <laughs> love that meeting yeah man i haven't i haven't seen you at the last couple no um, i've been at those soros uh payments oh, oh uh, yes workshops yeah that's that's where uh we get the payments from soros for all the uh you know the, all the protests great, he's paid for yeah and the false yeah. flag operations yeah, and stuff. of course yeah, naturally yeah 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 um <laughs> can you send me the notes yeah from the for from sure the, the minutes from that last meeting will do yeah so uh, you know, we just got to make, make sure that we keep our foot on the neck of the most popular holiday in the country. <laughs> so, you know, as it goes, um, we got to keep fighting that good fight. That's right. Some of us do it by dressing our dogs in <laughs> holiday themed sweaters, which I have done this evening. Yes. Harriet looks uh, adorable slash dejected. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I will say her Halloween banana split costume uh, <laughs> gives her more anxiety than, than the Christmas sweater. So I know. I mean, it's. I can't imagine that she feels much. If you already have a fur coat right. and then you put like a wool sweater, oh, I'm, it's cozy. It's it is pretty. It is pretty cozy. But <laughs> there may or may not be some magnified pod family pictures. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so from our studio to yours. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be uh this is gonna be a long ep. <laughs> I know what it's going to be. Unlike usual. No, I, I think this is gonna be longer <laughs> four hours. This is gonna be longer than usual. Yeah. Cause we have um some stuff to talk about. We have some voicemails, we have our top 10 or at least 10 albums that we of the year that we are going to discuss and then we have a lot of christmas songs (laughs) there's a lot to get through and uh the the quality is wide ranging it's accurate (laughs) i i will say i i enjoyed not to not to spoil things here but My impression of the majority of the Christmas songs over the years, having not really done a super deep dive, was like mixed at best. And I would say sure. I enjoyed myself pretty well listening to these yeah, Christmas I, songs. I think I was pleasantly surprised yeah. with a, a chunk of them. Yes. So, but we will, we will get there. And John, as we, uh, this this episode, people will be receiving this this is our christmas gift that's right to everybody yep because this is going to be coming out on the friday before the whole christmas weekend right whatever you want to call it since christmas is what on a tuesday yes i think it's tuesday this year but it'll be friday tonight it will be friday tonight when this episode drops isn't it always that's true uh yeah this will be this will we wanted to release it a little early because people are going to be busy on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and maybe some people will be traveling Mm -hmm. on Friday or Saturday. Give them something to listen to over the weekend if they have a, if they 
have a long flight or a long drive or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're wrapping some prezzies. Yeah, in rap- your little podcast. Yeah, to keep you so, company. So yeah, if you if you uh, if there's something that you want to get us for <laughs> Christmas, it's a uh, it's diamonds. <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get, we'll get that there. we'll get there. <laughs> yes, I will take some diamonds and some MXPX merch if you're listening. Yep, yep I'll take that too. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk Christmas. <laughs> what uh, what are so we we had a little question of the week uh, about Christmas tradition. Mm-hmm. The Christmas tradition that uh, people, you know, how do how do they celebrate the holidays? Not necessarily Christmas traditions, but uh, what do you do? What are some of your favorite holiday traditions or memories? And so we just kind of put that put that out uh, on Instagram. Sierra says milkshakes on christmas morning with breakfast uh my girls and me love this tradition i'm into that i'm into and she said uh coffee or chocolate malt yeah i'm into a coffee milkshake yeah um wake you up easy yeah, into the day that's right and uh leonore hey there hey jeff the girl yeah from five iron she all she said was tamales, and I was like, uh, she really said tamales, the tamales, <laughs> it's not Three. top of the muffin to you. <laughs> no, it is. Oh, right. Uh, she said, so I asked for some more info. She said, get around a big table with all your tias, abuela, and mom, and everybody works on part of it pork and lots of chili. So that's that to me says. It doesn't matter kind of like what food you're making, mm-hmm. but like that it's a big family thing that everybody's participating in. Yeah. I love it. Um, so then we have, uh, I am Jeff going to uh, Manning Street in, uh, I don't know what that, <laughs> do you know what the, you, U- Ukaipa, Ukaipa, Ukaipa. Is that a is that a place? It's a place. <laughs> uh, to watch the Christmas light show, then cruising to Jose's Mexican food restaurant to eat, then going to Bass Pro Shop on Christmas Eve, picking an ornament, getting picked with Santa, and then eat at the Hat or the Fish Place. If it's not too busy, three tamales. <laughs> so we got two tamales. Yeah. I think there's some others maybe too. Uh, Yucaipa is in San Bernardino. Okay. Um... MXPX memes, Danny Leary, I watch all over the other reindeer every year. That is not a program with which I am familiar. Have you have well, you heard of it? All of the other reindeer. Oh, what did I Get say? It? You said Oliver. But oh, it's Olive. like a plan. All of the other reindeer. But it's oh. about an actual reindeer named Olive. Okay. She Olive has the some other Christmas reindeer. Hijinks. Yeah. That is clever <laughs> as hell. Yep. <laughs> that is that's good. So I'll have to check it out. Sorry for butchering your (laughs) tradition, Danny. And Dr. Chad (laughs) says, we each get a new ornament every year. This year, Josh and I got an owl and the boys got a llama and a poop emoji. Yeah. I've, I've talked to some of their friends and, um, people about ornaments, Mm -hmm. getting new ornaments every year. Is that something that, you do? Yeah, do we do usually it? do it, too. What is, um, what are the, because Dana and I, we started, we've, we've gotten some new ornaments over the year, but we haven't made it a, a tradition to get, like, specifically get a new one every year. Sure. What are your, do you have, like, uh, specifications for what makes it on the tree? Because I know, so I have a, a orange and purple polka dotted a wood dinosaur uh-huh. that is on the tree that perfect <laughs> that Dana is not super into. So that's it's typically like side tree uh-huh. action. Yeah, uh, very much like the that most recent SNL sketch. 
Did you see the the back see the back no. of the tree ornaments? You gotta check it out. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Was uh, this the same episode as the Weezer yes, sketch? Okay. <laughs> it was yeah, this this was probably one of the most solid mm-hmm. like sketch for sketch sketch for sketch uh SNLs that's been on this season. Not a lot of it wasn't like typical hit or miss. I feel uh, like Matt Damon and everybody crushed Matt it. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> I will check it out. Yes. So, um, what, yeah, what do you, if you yeah. pick out an ornament, is it like it has to, I mean, because your, your tree has some pretty, uh, it's, it's, what, what am I even looking for? It's diverse. <laughs> yeah. There's a Ninja Turtle in there. Yes. Uh, some Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. out in there. Um, no, I mean, we usually, we'll get it at like, like this year we went to Chris Kindle Market and picked yes. out an ornament from there. Or it'll be like if we're at a place that has a special one and we'll – sometimes we've gotten one with a house for a year that we, like, bought our house. And oh, nice. So something that sort of relates to what's going on at the time, I guess. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I – do you have a – do you have a favorite ornament or do you have any ornaments that have transitioned from your childhood tree? Yeah. There are some of those. I don't know if I can name like a specific one. There's one like Nutcracker one where you pull a string and he opens up his mouth. Okay. Thought that was cool when I was a kid and we've got that now. So yeah, I don't know. How about you? Um, so yeah, let's let's talk let's talk Christmas morning <laughs> and Christmas as kids, because as a kid, did you always do a real tree? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we always had a real tree growing up and that is a tradition that is carried over into um our christmas tradition and did you how did you go about decorating the tree what was your cuz we had a very specific way of mm. doing things i don't know that we had a an order we do now uh in my family we do like a Black Friday, instead of shopping, we get the tree okay. and get donuts and make mimosas. And then nice. <laughs> we wait the uh, required or recommended 24 hours for the branches to fall. <laughs> See, this is this is what we do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, this is not something that Dana was f- familiar with. It might be like a myth. I don't know. <laughs> is it real? <laughs> no. I mean, if you, if you get a tree that's all wrapped up right. and all the it's branches are, yeah. you know... You need you need you need some more, uh, you know, ninety degree angles. Right, that's what I'm saying. You know, you got to get the the branches not like all pointing upwards. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we we wait at least uh, a day. We if we get it in the evening, we'll do it like typically the following evening. Okay. Um. Yeah, but it's but one of the traditions that we've started is the putting on the Sufjan, I think I mentioned this in a yeah. previous episode, putting on the Sufjan Christmas yep. albums and it's, it, and just talking about our, some of our traditions and getting our ornaments and, um, yeah, it's, it's picking out a tree is a, is a serious thing. We, we want to be a good, a good looking tree. We want it to, be tall we want it to be girthy as you know everybody wants everybody wants a little girth little christmas girth <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah that's that's uh dear santa this this christmas i want a little christmas girth <laughs> uh but uh yeah that's did you as a kid did you open up christmas did you open up presents on christmas day uh, yeah, we usually did a big Christmas Eve party at my aunt's house. And okay. that was like the extended family. And then Christmas Day was just my immediate family. Did, yeah, I, I, we were always Christmas morning presents. Yeah. We, I know that some people open presents on Christmas Eve and I could never yeah. get down with that. Right. Like I didn't understand necessarily why maybe it maybe because the day is more about going to see family or something like that but we typically would open one present okay that from sounds familiar. like an extended family member somebody who doesn't really count just open that one <laughs> exactly uh you know maybe 
some uh, music inspired by the Passion of the Christ, sure. something for like example. that. For example, just kind of <laughs> pulling that out of nowhere. You sure. know, not that I've ever brought that up before. <laughs> Um, and I definitely didn't get that when I was in college, when Once that, the movie came out. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sense. no, but it's like, <laughs> you were a grown I was, person. <laughs> I was a grown person. And it's like, I feel like I've, I feel like I've been a little bit rough on my <laughs> Poor grandma. Jared's <laughs> definitely been rough on your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Um, I wasn't even thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but anyway anyway christmas traditions <laughs> christmas traditions just ripping on your grandparents yep. oh boy. yeah i i've and and as i've gotten older there are some traditions that i've uh you know some of the some of the things like traditions for tradition's sake to me is not the best way of approaching a lot of things when people say, but it's tradition. <laughs> it's like, especially you, when they say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> but like when it's, when people it's cause it's just like one step away from like, but just it's the way it's always been done. Right. Right. And you're, and then that gets into some f- potentially problematic areas, mm. mm-hmm. but they're just some some tra- traditions are if if they're harmless and they're not harming anybody that's just like it warms it warms my heart to think about you know waking up on christmas morning and mm-hmm. you know i'm a grown ass man a married man but uh-huh. there's something about waking up at my parents place yeah that's cool on on a on christmas morning and there's coffee on, and my mom has made her uh, yearly bubble bread, which is like a some it's something it's has different names in different places. Like it's like, like a pull apart bread or monkey, mm, bread, monkey bread or something. Yeah. yeah, like one of those things. Sounds and, wonderful. Oh, it's the best. It has walnuts and like this caramely, caramely like mm. stuff drizzled yeah. all over it and. Drizzle it. Oh, man, it's the best, and I'm so excited for that. And then we crack open some mimosas. Sounds great. Get get, get the fire. Your, get your the footy fire. pajamas on. Well, I do wear my <laughs> my red union suit <laughs> nice. with with butt flap. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, it's it's one of those things that, as I have gotten older, uh, it it is less and less appropriate. <laughs> Like as a grown man to be, uh-huh. to be like opening presents, like. Are you going to say opening your butt flap? <laughs> no, <laughs> but like, yeah, that would be less appropriate. But you know, like these, like union suits are, aren't exactly like, they're not hiding much from the world <laughs> in, in terms of the, uh, the bulge area. <laughs> sure. Sure. You know, and. It's hey, show it off on Christmas. When else do you <laughs> gotta, get a chance? Gotta unwrap that package, bro. <laughs> <That> Christmas bulge. <laughs> yep, yep. That's so. I don't know how how was how was Christmas morning changed uh, with uh, with you and Jenny, and then in these past uh, four or five years with mm-hmm. with now having two kids. Uh, it doesn't. They're not quite old enough yet to like wake up. That morning, be like Christmas, but sure. like I'm sure that's coming soon. We've got like Elliot has like four different advent calendars he's blowing through every day, <laughs> and one of them is this like paper chain thing. Okay. Have you seen these? No. And you take off like one chain for each like sleep until it's Christmas Day. So he'll like that's the first thing he wants to do when he wakes up these days is like take off the chain and be like, Dad, there's ten more sleeps till Christmas. So like this year might be. <laughs> the first year of that but yeah i don't know usually we keep it pretty chill and quiet in the morning and then uh, other family comes over later in the day but i don't know i just remember being little and like wanting to stay up late to yeah. catch santa sure and like some years i was like i am determined i'm gonna stay up and prove once and for all whether this thing is real or not and then inevitably i would fall asleep uh, I mean, at home or and, whatever. So. And, and you know, and you wouldn't have discovered anything 
other than that he's real. Right. I mean, so he would give me a high five and, give me... and go back to sleep and call it a day. Yeah. He'd, you know, he'd, he'd be like, thanks for the milk, John. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Your Christmas bulge looks pretty great. <laughs> it's coming along nice, <laughs> little John. <laughs> what a disturbing <laughs> vision this has become. <laughs> That is one kick-ass mullet. <laughs> yeah, he would have said that for sure. Santa probably had a mullet in those days. In yeah, days. he's uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, adrenalized shit. That one rules. <laughs> yep, that's my fucking jam. <laughs> Blitzer loves that. It's Blitz, Blitzen. Blitzen. Blitzen loves that one. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, he's he's like, don't worry, I got an extra pair of jorts for you. <laughs> oh man, little Christmas jorts just made little Johnny's heart warm. This, some of these some of these phrases that we've said so far <laughs> sound like some really terrible Christmas songs. <laughs> You know that, that Christmas Christmas, jorts. <laughs> Christmas shoes song <laughs> that Noswalt uh, famously <laughs> addressed it. Yes, that is a uh, an awful song. It's tough, tough one. Yep. Um, so <laughs> why don't we why don't we want to get into some voicemails? Let's do it. Um, let's see who we got blowing up the lines. Who do we got? We have well, we have. I mean, I can give you like zero guesses because you. <laughs> Probably already know Danny Stairs yeah. from his Christmas uh, little shack we've set up for him under the stairs. <laughs> exactly, here, his little nook. You know, we'll we'll give him some chestnuts. I guess yeah. I don't know. That guy loves chestnuts. <laughs> he's, he's a nut fan. So Danny Stairs left us like ninety two <laughs> messages, but okay. um, fortunately, a lot of them sounded like this. Hey guys, it's one day third again. Wasn't he Jewish? Not real interesting how quote gay he was. Dude, I hear Jared Scott. Do you watch that guy's Instagram stories? That guy says all the. Okay, (laughs) come on, guy. We have been, we have been over this again. Bush League. <laughs> Did you ever make out any? Of no, no. It's like, Jared Scott. There's like at least three of them where he's like, <laughs> Jared, Jared Scott. <laughs> so yeah, I I have no idea what he's saying, uh, but we do have some that do make sense. Can't wait. Hey, what's up, dudes? Boys and again. Uh, to your rundown of your top ten set list or your ten song te- set list. Um, a little weird because one of your twelve songs only get thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to disqualify both of them. <laughs> John, you're disqualified because you used two songs at number six. We don't have to eat into that again. <laughs> Please see my prior email. Uh-huh. Andrew, you're disqualified because I just I, I wasn't feeling that. I'm sorry. He has some he has some bangers on there, but he has some. You, you missed you. You left too many good songs out. I, maybe the problem is that Stryker was a little heavy-handed. Only doing ten songs. I see why you guys did the encore. Maybe he's the real problem here again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right. Have a good week, Mad Pop for Life. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, bud. Yeah, we we got a little uh, little heat, and then <laughs> that heat got pushed off on to Riker, but. You know, I think he was um, taking issue again for people who might not understand the Small Town Minds first class mail that you Uh included as a single song, which I feel like is perfectly legitimate. Yep. Um, And he didn't give any specifics as to why I (laughs) was disqualified, but other than that, I had two encores, but let's be real. Any band is going to have an encore, so. But yeah, I think we need to hear his list. Yeah, he's if he's you know done bus tossing us, I think he should he should give us give us their his top ten. Yeah, uh, he has some thoughts on that Jared Scott wedding mix CD. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Your boy Danny Stairs. Good morning, Monday morning. Get this week going strong. You know, all those. 
exciting things in my career. I think about Mondays. Like, dude, I love that guy, but he's wrong about Mondays. Anyhow, um, listening to your interview with Jerry here, that uh, wedding mix CD sounds pretty fucking sweet. Um, and I'm calling to make an official offer. Uh, the pod is welcome to extend this to Jared, and I, I think he's going to take you up on it. If Jared will uh, get a copy of that uh, CD to you, I will write him into an official Danny Stairs MXPX erotic fan. <laughs> so just throwing it out there, I think Jared will be into it. So, you know, hopefully this helps, guys. Magpie for life. <laughs> the highest honor <laughs> one can achieve. I mean, we still haven't heard back from Mike about oh the – uh, uh, fanfic. Well, you really should ask him, like, what did you do with that? Did you read any of it? I want to know what he thought. I really want to know what he thought. <laughs> um, and we have a little uh, April. All right. April added to our latest uh, Patreon Punk Yes, our list. newest Patreon Punk. Yeah. Thank you, April. What's up, my boys? It's April. Just wanted to uh, ask comments on a few things I've been listening to. Um, for Spa Riker, what's up? Thanks for the shout out. You're awesome. Um, so first of all, 2018 album of the year, since you guys haven't discussed it yet, I got to throw out there Thrice Palms. Um, I loved Thrice in the Artist in the Ambulance and Illusion of Safety Days. Kind of stopped listening to them for a long time, but that album came out and it was awesome and I was super stoked. And then I saw them a couple weeks ago, and their show was just one of the most incredible shows that I've ever seen. So I got really excited for it and um, have decided to go back and listen to some of the older stuff that I kind of dismissed because, you know, the sound change, um, I think I appreciate it a little bit more now as I've gotten older. And they're just so incredibly talented and smart and thoughtful, and uh, that album Palms is like a story like once you start listening to it deeply you realize everything's connected and it's just fantastic so if you guys haven't heard it yet you should all listen to it um second of all on this uh ultimate playlist or set list first well 10 songs is not enough let's just start there um so i would have cheated too because as you guys know i do that with my top three all the time so my uh top 10 would probably have ended up around 20 um, but anyways, John, you came in hot. Those first five songs, I was like, damn, John, like, <laughs> this is the shit. Right. And I don't really care for Small Town Mind, sorry. Um, that's where uh, it fell off a little bit. Um, but that's where it gets started. I was thinking, I, as a fan, am super lucky because you guys always talk about how you want to hear her that sound with Five Iron. Mm -hmm. And for as many times as I've seen MXPX, I think there's only been one or two times that I haven't seen that song with them in it. So I'm thinking that there's a chance or maybe you guys just need to come out to Southern California because that seems to be where it happens basically every time. So anyways, I think that's it for now. Um, hope you guys are going to have a fantastic Christmas episode. Can't wait to hear about it. Uh, December is awesome. Emily Whitehurst and Mike and Pierre are fantastic. Oh, that reminds me. John, you're a little dig on Pierre. What the heck is that? Like... <laughs> I know, good your life, blah, 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 and you're like, oh, that makes sense, or whatever you said. <laughs> uh, simple plan's good, and you should stop being a hater. Um, so anyways, I'm out. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, April. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, uh, so, yeah, we're, we're getting some, like, mixed <laughs> voicemails where like starts off with like some love ends with some like chastising and then i mean that's how you know we're family you know. <laughs> exactly yeah. uh yeah i well a, a no dig on pierre i i enjoy his uh his contributions to the wider mxpx canon um I think what we were just trying to say is that they're a little poppier than mm -hmm. we're into, mm -hmm. and so it checked out to me that that would be uh, one of his faves. Yep. Um, thrice, uh, add it to the list of several voicemails we've gotten now of yep. mentions of punk bands who put out albums this year that I didn't even know <laughs> existed. I knew so. Paul. I knew Palms was coming out because it was pretty heavily advertised. Okay. And. I I was fucking with Thrice from, like, Illusion of Safety, Artist in the Ambulance, uh, uh, Viesu. 
Get yeah. Um, and then the Alchemy Index, and then that's kind of where I yeah fell off was those like so like 2008 was the kind of the last yeah. uh kind of time I checked in mm-hmm. with them but yeah we should uh I mean people are saying good things yeah should check it out he is he does have some very thoughtful lyrics mm-hmm. I'm into that yeah I don't think I ever saw them but I've seen I them know, okay once yeah I know people talk about how good their live show is <clears> which <throat> I could see yeah so I saw them <laughs> It was kind of a, a random collection. It was Thrice, uh, Me Without You, Ooh. and Brand New. Okay. So three very solid bands. Uh, I I don't know if there's like, I'd be interested to see what the kind of crossover and fandom of yeah. those three bands is. Yeah, interesting. But they were, they were great. Yeah. Um, Let's, uh, we got some, we got some little controversy. Mm. It continues. All right. It's, uh, Lindy calling again. I just want to, uh, say, um, that I'm going to hop a flight down to, uh, Chicago, <laughs> old Chi Town there, and, uh, I'm going to fight y'all because, uh, Yellow Starburst happens to be the best Starburst Interesting. in the world. I have my reasons. I'm not going to say them on air because, because it's a little inappropriate. Your mouth is but broken. they are the best. I will no. fight you all. Okay. I'm ruining the reputation of every Canadian <laughs> that ever was because I'm a feisty. I'm a feisty little person. That's right. I know I'm short. I know you guys uh I know you guys think that me and uh Danny Stairs are, are the short people <laughs> in uh in this uh PX community. That's right. I just used air quotes even though I know you couldn't see them. Um you know, we're not short, we're fun sized. That's right. Fun sized. And uh yellow starburst forever. Forever <laughs> That's all. Love you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> two things. Uh, you're still wrong about <laughs> Yellow Starburst. Uh, y- even though uh, you threatened us with violence, you still came off as adorable <laughs> and Canadian. So I don't know. Maybe this is like Canadian threatening, <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't. This is come on. We'll we'll, we'll fight you. We'll take I, you on. But this, just, <laughs> this is like this is like uh, the the least threatening voicemail I think we possibly could have ever gotten. <laughs> I just love that this is <clears throat> far and away the most controversial <laughs> topic we've addressed in our it's uh, true couple dozen plus episodes now is um, people's very passionate opinions about Star I Wars did, flavors. I had no idea. No idea that first episode where we were just casually mentioning it, <laughs> mentioning it that it would it would launch it, a revolution <laughs> red riders and pink boys and pink girls uh and what was no now uh oh yellow yeah um, yeah what have they oh gosh they've, they've launched yeah, their one. own hashtag now or lemon lemon something maybe yeah, yeah. what are, i don't even know lemon lifers or something like nah, that it's even better than that is it we gotta give strikers proper credit here yeah what is it um well yeah, I, I, hey, I don't take away from those who enjoy the yellow. If if you are enjoying them, that's your prerogative. I will lemonhead, lemonhead. There you go. <laughs> um, I'll continue, uh, you know, in my beliefs, and and you can continue in yours, and we can just have a dialogue together. About I guess our... so. We'll be we'll try and keep it. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll try and keep it. You know, down here in the U.S., we we can get a little rowdy, Lindy. You know, this is this is how we do things. But uh, we'll take your we'll take your fun size fisticuffs to the street. <laughs> oh yeah. See, no interviews, <laughs> so, so I can you're free to crack so him at will. <laughs> crack this open. Um, so, John, feel free to pour some of this. Thanks, Brad. And we have another voicemail from our boy. Adam from North Carolina. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Adam from North Carolina again. Uh, just thanking you guys for the shout-out and playing my voicemail. 
Y'all are wrong about it being our first interaction. While you're right that I haven't previously left a voicemail, um, I'm a long time, first time. I've, uh, I'm a Instagram lurker. I don't have an account, but I like to see what you guys post on there. You know, I'm on the Facebook page, but I did send you guys an email several weeks ago, hmm. uh, answering one or two of the questions of the week. Never heard back from you guys, but yes. I don't know. Maybe you guys have gotten too big. <laughs> big kind of time. Forgotten where you came from. Don't care about the fans. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. So definitely not our first interaction. You guys are just sellouts, and you don't care. But whatever. <laughs> Giving you guys a hard time, of course. Uh, so thanks for the shout out. Thanks for kicking Danny Stairs out of the basement and letting me move in. I'm happy to steal his residency. To let you know, I'm also an attorney and lobbyist, so I'm happy to steal you guys as a client. You know, mm-hmm. I'll take his residency and poach his best client, the Magpod. Come on over. Uh, lastly, shout out to Riker. He's been getting crapped on for a couple <laughs> weeks now, possibly rightfully so for his life and general opinion. Mm-hmm. Got to tell you, I'm a big White Stripes fan, Jack White fan myself, and he kind of dug himself even further in the hole by saying that the new Jack White album was good. I don't feel that way, but that could be more of a reflection on my taste and my lack of being able to appreciate art and not his. But, uh, yeah, he's been getting crapped on. We all have our controversies when it comes to MXPX, so I'm going to take the heat I heat off Riker right now and give you guys one of mine, one of my hot take controversies. I know people don't like Secret Reppin' generally, but the song Drowning off that album may be a top five MXPX song for me. Love that song. Fascinating. Love it on the album. I even love it on the acoustic version, which I know you guys said was too long, but (laughs) I love it. So trying to take some heat off of them. Uh, anyways, thanks again to show there's no hard feelings between anybody I've mentioned on this voicemail. I'm going to close it out by saying Magpod for life, stare it for life, Riker <laughs> for always. Oh. Nice. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, that is, uh, that's our bad. <laughs> yeah. We definitely talked about your email and yeah. how great it was and we planned to respond and then, uh, we blew it. Forgot about that. Yeah. So we, we need to, uh, cover some of the things that you did talk about in the email. It was a really, really nice email. And I did reply to you and say, damn, like, because I I had sent it to John right away. It was like, oh man, this is so nice. And, and then we were talking about it. And then I think, I don't know. I feel like it was sort of around the Brian Bouchelt time. I don't know. It was anyway, it, uh, it kind of got lost. So we apologize um, but here's the thing. I want to start a bidding war for us as a client, uh, for <laughs> Adam and Danny stairs. What do fair. you, what do you got? I, yeah. Let's, I, let's see. I support that. He's a lobbyist. He's probably got some, he's got, what are your connections? Yeah. I want to know what kind of lobbying yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah. Who are you lobbying for? Um, or maybe we, maybe we don't want to know. I'm yeah, not sure. That's, could be. that's, you've listened to enough of our podcast to know, if we want to know. So (laughs) we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. But let's, uh, I was just going to say, neither of us had drowning in our top three. No, I think it's a decent song. It's, (laughs) I can't remember what we talked about when we talked about it. I do remember saying the acoustic version was too long, but it was very long. Does that does not make my top five MXPX? No, not, but I'm glad you enjoy it. Not even close. (laughs) Uh, so anyway, I want to read some of Adam's really nice email that he sent to us. He says, first off, I want to say again how much I enjoy the podcast. I'm slightly older than you guys, 38. I have a career, a child, an ex-wife, and a soon-to-be new wife. Congratulations. Yeah. Suffice to say, I'm busy. That said, I still love music, listening to it, debating it, reading about it, etc., I love the bands I listened to in high school and college, such as MXPX. Sure, some of my friends back then listened to that music, but these days when we get together, they usually want to talk kids, home renovation, repairs, 401k. Hard for me to change the subject and say, yeah, but what do you guys think about this new MXPX album, Return to Form? Where is it ranking the catalog? 
My point is, while I love to think about these things, I don't get a chance to really talk about it in real life with others. Listening to your podcast gives me a chance to indulge that side of me and my interest. Obviously, I'm not in the room discussing it with you, but it's fun to think about that, what I might say about a certain album or certain songs, what my top three would be from before everything and after, etc., Uh, I do this with not just the MXPX portion of the show. I don't always agree with all the religious or political points you guys make on the show. Sometimes I do agree with them. But I still think about what my response would be if if I were in the room. I know you guys might get a lot of grief over the politics and religious stuff. And there's some that say, just give me that sweet, sweet MXPX content. But it doesn't bother me. If anything, this country right now needs to be able to listen to differing viewpoints and be capable of having civil discourse without automatically demonizing those we disagree with. So uh, that's that's amazing. Yeah. First off, we really appreciate that. Um, you know, this is so when you say, yeah, I mean, you're not in the room discussing with us but you're in our hearts though but you are in the room in the sense that like that's what the voicemails are for that's why we play so many of them because it keeps that dialogue going and we love to hear what what people have to say so yeah i mean we're not like sitting across from each other but uh it's it's nice to hear what people say and we all have those we all have those different experiences for for why an album caught us the way it did or whatnot. So, um, yeah. And, you know, I, I don't feel like we've gotten a lot of pushback necessarily for any of the, um, religious or political content. I don't, haven't had too many people say, you know, you know, if, if people disagree, maybe they're just trying to be sure kind and amicable and not like, they do say, just talk about the music sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> which is fair enough. Yeah. You can skip ahead if that's not your jam. Yeah, that's true. That's why we put the timestamps. Mm-hmm. And we've said that for a minute now. Yep. Uh, so he does have his ranking of the 10 studio albums. That's him. So we had mentioned that Riker was one of the only people who did that, but we have Adam. Yeah. So number one... Uh, life in general. Sure. So for Riker, that's that <laughs> number, number one is when something's really good. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so he's so Adam says it was the first one he heard. So maybe more sentimental. Um, with the combined fact that it is a banger from start to finish. Correct. One hundred percent agree. Yep. Number two, slowly. Okay. Number three, ever passing moment. He said it was the first new release by them okay. um, once he discovered the band. And self-titled MXPX is number four. Okay. He said, but it could flip with Ever Passing Moment. So okay. I think we both have that kind of experience with Panic. Panic. Right? Yeah. Uh, that we both could kind of. Yep. Uh, his number five, Teenage Politics. Okay. You know, I'll take, he says, sorry. He knows it's our number one. Uh, it's in his top five. But here's the thing, it's his top five. We've seen a lot of people, it's not even in the top no, five. No, <laughs> it's not. So I think having Teenage Politics in the top five says something. Yeah. Uh, Secret Weapon is number six. Uh, he says it defies logic and good taste. <laughs> Plans is number seven. Yeah. Panic is eight. Mm. That, that to me is more controversial than Secret Weapon. Uh, you know, like... I understand. I mean, if Secret Weapon were in the top five, that'd be another thing. But Panic is 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 too good. He says, "Let me say that six through eight could also go in reverse." But I don't know. Uh, Pokenatch is nine, and before, before everything, after is ten. All right. So, uh, but here's one thing I need to say. He this he he has a little section in here about. <clears throat> Guilty Pleasures. So this was, you know, back when we were talking about Guilty Pleasure bands. Yeah. And he said, um, for me, and don't tell anyone, but I ride or die for Dashboard Confessional. Okay. And he said he saw Dashboard open open for some punk uh, show or maybe on maybe his first tour and thought, what the fuck is this little guy doing up there with an acoustic <laughs> guitar? 
and but after two songs he had me so um i i am a dashboard fan especially the early stuff Mm -hmm. uh the places you've come to fear the most from beginning to end throw on that album i know every goddamn word (laughs) it's i mean some people might think it emo is you know that kind of music is kind of corny Mm -hmm. or but that album specifically is so high school to me Mm. and it it I I got your back, so you know, I I'm not gonna not gonna bust toss you for liking Dashboard, man. Sure. That's there is nothing wrong with that, <laughs> not one bit. And we got another voicemail here. Merry Christmas, fellas! Get it, guys! Santa Claus! Wait here so long. <laughs> This is Mike Moen. Thanks, Mike Moen. Now don't you, don't you do me wrong. <laughs> I'm on Charlie Cobb. I'm playing guitar. A cute little honey. Mike, you gotta, you gotta stop doing this to us. You just gotta get on the show, bro. Oh, man. You gotta. Oh. This is, wait, this is They Might Be Giants. Does that give you a clue? Um, Whose favorite band is They Might Be Giants? Daniel Leary of Daniel MXPX Leary. Memes. It doesn't. I, I don't. Know. A lot of people the, like They Might Be Giants. I'm just trying to work some. I don't some know. It doesn't really sound. Here. Doesn't really sound <laughs> it like doesn't, him. But maybe he's. For life. <laughs> 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 You're right. It does not. It does not sound like Daniel Leary at all. I prefer imagining him as. The cackler, the phantom cackler, the phantom cackler. He shall remain. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank for you for beautiful rendition. Are you? Are you? Because is that the uh, the? I thought he was singing the Mike Moen uh, uh, Christmas song, the uh, Santa Claus. Oh wait, what's the Mike Moen Christmas song? The Santa Claus song featuring Mike Moen. Oh well, that's that. It, that's got to be what it is. Yeah. Well. Uh, well, now you... I'm all turned around. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's yeah. This is what it is. Is this a cover or something? We'll we'll get there. That is definitely what he was singing. Yes. Is that a cover? Ah, we'll get there. I don't know. They Might Be Giants performed it. So did the Sonics in the 60s. So, yeah, anyway. Um, Yes, no, it's not Daniel Leary. And that makes sense. It is Mike Moen. I'm going to go with that. (laughs) Yep. So thanks again, Mike Moen, for calling in and uh, keeping the mystery alive. Mm -hmm. We never want to know your identity. No. Just continue the cackling. Yep. And that's that's how it shall remain. <laughs> um let's see, what do we got what do we got going on? We got uh out of voicemails. <laughs> that, that was that all the voicemails? That was all the voicemails. All right. Well, I mean, should we get into our favorite albums of the year? Yes. Oh. All right. So uh here, let's get a little more. All right. Thanks, bro. Mm. <laughs> Got a. We haven't done. We haven't done any oh, ASMR yeah. in a while. <laughs> now you're gonna want to listen to Santa Claus featuring Mike Moen. It's a cover. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that. I didn't. I don't know who the cover is, <laughs> because we just we got a, a shout out to our boy Danny Stairs for hooking us up with a lot of these. Yeah missing tracks Mm -hmm. um i was able to find a good amount of them on youtube and the like but there were some that uh that i wasn't able to get my hands on yeah so but yeah so there's no information that i have on this mike moen song (laughs) so pretty i'm pretty confident about it the the bands I mentioned covering it before and yeah. them covering it now. So. so okay, let's go top ten. Uh, I don't have a I don't have I don't have a particular order. Okay. Do you do you have a uh, 
how do you want to do this? Do you just want to go? Maybe we just, yeah, we just blow through them on our own. Do you, do you want to say anything about? I've got a little bit to say about each of them. Okay. Just a little, why don't just, you, just a little bit. Why don't you start with, uh, and for me, again, this isn't, I'm not ranking them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go through them fairly quickly. Obviously, we got MXPX in there. Yep. But this we're thinking of as sort of separately from the obvious pick. I think Janelle Monet's Dirty Computer has got to be my record of the year. It feels like an instant classic. Uh, I mentioned it on the pod when it first came out, but it feels like she's sort of channeling Prince, which I need in my life as a big Prince fan. It feels very 2018. It's kind of a concept album, so very into that. Um, Mitski, her album Be the Cowboy, she's another one I've mentioned on the show. Uh, just a super versatile record. She first came onto my radar with... Um, the song Your Best American Girl. Uh, is that what it's called? Something like that. Uh, You're All American Girl. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but uh, that song is great and has these like very 90s um, guitars that you don't hear a ton anymore. And um, this record has some of that, but it has some weird synthy stuff. Um, has piano stuff. She's like classically trained. Um, anyway, very well-rounded. Uh, Beach House put mm-hmm. out a great record this year um i think it's their eighth album uh, i love this record i love this band they do uh, great dream pop and this is more in that realm uh robin put out an album mm-hmm. honey mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i love her I'm going to see her in a few months stoked about that uh this is her first record in eight years and i love her last record and i haven't seen her live so i'm pumped for that uh courtney barnett you know her yep yep i got we that new talked record about too. Her. yeah that record is great um i remember hearing her first album and liking it but the this new record tell me how you really feel is just yeah. like really great garage rock uh, yeah it sounds great uh john prine put out a record tree of forgiveness he's kind of a legendary folk singer uh kind of came to prominence in the 70s but He's kind of got this gravitas now as he's gotten older and has this deeper voice. And it's just a really solid um, folk record from mm-hmm. kind of an older dude. I'm into those things. Um, uh, Low is one of my favorite bands. Uh, talking about Christmas records, they have a Christmas album that's one of my faves. Um, but they put out an album, Double Negative, this year. It's their 12th album. Very, like, droney, slowcore, that whole thing that's usually what they do but this is one of their weirder ones um i'm into it and then um we talked uh about all the kanye produced records as they came out this year mm-hmm. i think my favorites of the bunch remain the Pusha t record daytona okay. yeah um which i think yeah i think that's the most successful of the kanye projects this year to me i still listen to it the most and then kids see ghosts i would probably put in there too maybe towards the bottom. It didn't quite reach the heights of what I was hoping for with that collaboration, but I still have returned to it a fair amount. Um, and then finally, this is kind of a weird one, but uh, Colin Stetson is like this avant-garde uh, saxophone player and composer, and he did the score to the movie Hereditary, which hmm. I'm a big scary movie guy, um, and this movie is terrifying and weird, and he did the score and it is scary, but it also reaches these sort of like euphoric heights, uh, by the end of the record. And I've listened to that a lot. So I was throwing that in too. So those, those are my 10 faves. What you got, bro? Um, okay. So we had only, we had, I guess, technically two albums. Okay. Um, on the, both on our list. Uh And I don't know. Maybe Danny Stairs is going to give me shit for this, too. But Between the Buried and Me put out two albums this year, uh, uh, Automata 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there is sort of a joint collection in my mind. Y- the, yes, they did release them separately, but they are releasing a deluxe version of it together this January or February. And I just dropped some coin on getting, uh, I'm glad I did not purchase those vinyl separately right now since, uh, I, I was waiting for something and I'm glad they 
Yeah. They did, so... I gotta check it out. Yeah, I, I... For those of you who don't know, I'm a big metal fan. Between the Buried and Me, it's probably one of my favorite metal bands. Uh, just progressive, sometimes kind of weird and jazzy. And there's some elements on this record to me that have like kind of a Tom Waits vibe. Sometimes they throw in a squeeze box every now and then on their records and it can get kind of noisy and weird. And I really like it. Cool. Uh, MXPX, of course, um, silent planet, a metal band out of California, actually on solid state. Interesting. Uh, so the album is called when the end began and, I think it's easily the best metalcore album of the year. Nice. Super into it. Super into the uh, the lyrics. He, uh, the lead singer, uh, I think he has a master's in psychology. Cool. And his every line is just so rich with meaning and they they annotate every line so mm. if you buy their albums or go to genius.com you can cool. understand what they're talking about in each line uh andrew wk's you're not alone nice i was not uh, aware he put out a record yeah it's you know endlessly positive as andrew wk is yes. i've been a wk fan uh since uh, I get wet when that came out. Um, sure. It's, I mean, it's a classic. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a party rock, yep. party rock classic. Uh, the Interrupters fight the good fight. Okay. I think a lot of people are. Uh, there have been people who are saying, "Are we in the throes of fourth wave?" Fourth Skov? wave, baby. And I don't know if the Interrupters are the ones ushering it in, but they are definitely get a, getting a lot of. Uh, airplay a lot of tv spots they've been playing they played jimmy kimmel wow. which was kind of a big deal to me yeah i think uh as far as i do have i do have some hip-hop on my list saba his album care for me okay he is a chicago west side rapper right. this is his second album and mm-hmm. a lot of it a lot of the album is about his late cousin who got stabbed to death in 2017 so i from what i read when he was writing it he was saying oh man a lot of these guys a lot of these songs rather are about my cousin and what i like about it is that it's not overproduced the beats are at times just like really minimal Mm -hmm. and so it allows his lyrics to really come through uh into that sleep their album the sciences Mm -hmm. their first album in 13 years they are a stoner metal band stoner rock wikipedia says a doom metal power trio yeah (laughs) sounds so yeah they're Doom metal is certainly, uh, I would put them, I would still say they're certainly stoner. Sure. 100%. Uh-huh. Uh, they, I feel like you get uh, a contact high just from <laughs> listening to their, yeah. their stuff. I think they, had, didn't they have a song that was on uh, True Detective? I oh, I don't I'm, know. I think I'm not making that up and that song was nuts. Um, anyway. It's it's so the, the they're very doomy. They're very slow, very long songs. The uh, just like the the guitars and and it, and the bass and it, everything is just like fuzzy and and the guitar shredding sounds great. So if you don't have any any place to go and. You just want to like take a a nice rip of the rip of a bong or something or a pipe and uh-huh. just get blazed. I think this would be like, you know, just sit back. They have one <laughs> album. Their their album, um, 
they have an album that had two songs on it and it was i think it was their album uh dope smoker okay and it's you know they're just i don't know they're not like my favorite uh stoner metal band uh i i don't know if you've ever heard of elder mm-hmm. or baroness yep. uh those are those are kind of or Paul Bearer. Mm-hmm. Those are tend to be more of the kind of stoner metal, stoner rock bands that I'm into. Sure. Uh, uh yeah. By the way, the song Holy Mountain was the one that was okay. introspective. That song okay. is wild. Uh Ezra Furman's Trans Angelic Exodus. I don't even know what that is. So Ezra Furman is he's actually from Evanston. And he's, I think he's going to be a big deal. I think he has like some of the songs that he writes, it has this kind of indie rock vibe, but it also has, he has that storyteller kind of lyric that reminds me of Bruce Springsteen. And, but he's also, he's bisexual and he dresses sort of maybe like trying to do like a gender queer sort of thing. Uh-huh. Like that sounds right. He's like, sounds I'm better a, than uh, saying cross dressing. Oh uh, yeah. 100%. Um, and he, he's like, he says he's not transgender because he's like, I am, he identifies as a man, but like, sure. You know, he'll wear he'll wear dresses or something. And it's like that's just sort of queering his the, the gender norms, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, plus, he writes badass records. Idols, the Bristol, England punk band, their album Joy as an Act of Resistance mm-hmm. is awesome. Nice. And it touches on a lot of issues that I care about as a lib. Uh, (laughs) It's, and it's, they talk about, he has a, they have a song about toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. He has a song about grief as he, uh, he and his wife suffered a stillborn child. And he wrote this really personal song about it, about how, you know, even though they lost a child, he's still a father. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like this really powerful, moving song. Mm-hmm. Talks about immigration, talks about Brexit, and it's just like really, really great stuff. And Joy as an Act of Resistance is definitely up there in terms of like the best album titles of the year. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's an amazing title. And Janelle Monet, Dirty Computers on my yeah. list as well. I do have some other. I do have some honorable mentions. Here. Ghosts prequel. Oh yeah. Uh, the Swedish satanic pop rock band. <laughs> As discussed earlier. Yeah, it's it's great. I'm into it. And Black Thought, his streams of thought that right, right. he dropped, uh, was something else that I was really into. I mean, there are a lot of albums that I didn't feel like I even had a chance to. Yeah. I, I feel like I was so immersed in mxpx this year <laughs> that's true that i didn't even really get a chance to dive as much into some other records yeah, as true. as i wanted to but but it was worth it uh factual <laughs> yeah into into those records yeah. if anybody else wants to continue the conversation about what they like yeah let or us know if, yours. if any of the records that we mentioned <laughs> Um, I'm sure that there are people who are like, how could you not? Yeah. You know, well, but there's yeah. as evidenced by punk bands that have released records that we didn't know about that other people have mentioned right. and stuff. So, you know, um, Alkaline Trio put out a new album right, right. this year. Uh, yeah. Let us know yours and perhaps we'll throw these up maybe somewhere and, and people can comment there as well. But those are some of the records that came out this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, how about we talk Christmas songs here momentarily? MXPX Christmas songs? MXPX Christmas songs. I'm into it. All right, so... Take a little break to uh, get the reindeer strapped (laughs) in. (laughs) 
and then we'll be and, back. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. We'll have milk and cookies and <laughs> reindeer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll have those too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Diamonds. Diamonds. Uh, that, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so, John, this is this is our Christmas app. It are is. You, are you feeling jolly? I'm pretty jolly. I gotta I'm, say, I'm. I'm gonna get a little bit more jolly here. <laughs> yeah. We have. It's not a. Uh, it's not a best life. No. Few things are. But we gotta we gotta celebrate this Christmas up right. Agreed. May not be diamonds, but uh, <laughs> liquid diamonds, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. So yeah, John and I have been enjoying a uh, a selection of craft beers that the Midwest has to offer. Uh, if any, if any of uh, the uh, these breweries. Uh, Half Acre, Solemn Oath, Three Floyds. We Good will stuff. we will take we will take your <laughs> your money to hawk your products. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, John. Did you get any of these back in the day? Because so, I was not. I think you and I have uh, discussed famously. We missed infamously infamously missed the PX Fan Club. Yeah. We missed the whole whole deal. Yeah, and the more sort of um, entrenched we get into this community, the more people are like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. why weren't you part of the fan club? I don't know. I was never part of any fan club. It just wasn't I really on my radar. I, but, I, um, I wasn't even aware <coughs> that it was a thing. Yeah, well. I I guess I wasn't on the wasn't on the website enough. Yeah. I wasn't, I don't know. I wasn't I'm sure it was to... in those liner notes, and I don't know. I will say Christmas Day was definitely on my radar when it came out. It was on some mixes of mine in high school and definitely was part of my regular MXPX rotation. Okay. Um, And then here and there throughout the years, there would be ones that I would hear. Um, But yeah, for the most part, most of these songs are pretty new to both of us. Yeah. Yep. Um, Yeah. I mean, and you haven't heard... Pretty much any of them, right? No, up until uh, up until this year, I yeah. I had not really heard. Maybe I had heard some of these. Like maybe I heard punk rock Christmas somewhere or Christmas Day. I don't know. It's it didn't it didn't cross my yeah. Path. Um, also been kind of on people's radars this year because they just took this massive list of songs. Uh, I think the most recent punk rock Christmas release had 12 songs or 14 with some bonus tracks. And then they've sliced that thing down. And with the release of their new song, December for this year, yep. the current version of the record, uh, the punk rock Christmas EP is only six songs. Yep. That's what's currently streaming and stuff. So. Yeah. So I was, I snagged one of those CDs before they were, gone forever and i foolishly left it at home so (laughs) i know i blew it uh so but here here's the thing there are you can you can tell the moment they stop working with kravak Mm. interesting take (laughs) I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. We'll have to get into it. Oh, interesting. Is there some? No, there, I'm just, are we starting I, off with the controversy? No, no. Already? I just I wasn't um, thinking in that way, but looking through the songs, I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe. No, you'll you'll hmm. you'll hear. <laughs> okay. Um, hashtag, Kravac back. <laughs> Let's get him back. Um, shout out really quickly to maybe what makes a great. Christmas record. Okay. Um, That's an interesting conversation. Yeah. I, this is one, unlike 
covers where I was kind of saying like if there's a a version of the song and you do a new version of it, I'm kind of into it. But if you're just kind of doing the same thing, I don't really see the point. For Christmas songs, I'm kind of like I'm all in on any of it generally. Like I just love Christmas music. Um, um newsflash, <laughs> I'm I'm a big Christmas music fan too. Yeah. I know some people are like Christmas music is the worst. That Trump, he said it today. Believe me, if it makes people happy, I, I hate, hate it. it. It's the worst. I'm dead inside, so I hate Christmas. Anything um, that brings people joy, believe me, people. Oh man, it really could have been something he said. Um, but yeah, so I love when um, alternative bands or punk bands or whatever take on Christmas songs. You know, some we've talked about Sufjan extensively. I yeah. love those records. David Bazan has a great Christmas record. Over the Rhine has several great Christmas records. I mentioned Lowe's. Uh, Sleeping at Last did a similar thing where he would release a song a year for a long time. And he's got Amy a great Grant. Christmas collection. <laughs> Amy Grant is interviewed in my magazine. Yes. I um, don't know if we've heard any update on that. Maybe we'll have to do that. Oh, it's that. released. It's out there, people. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll do the... Uh, Amy Grant, Tennessee Christmas holiday special for the uh, Patreon, perhaps. Yes. Um, oh, man. <laughs> the Brilliance uh, has a great Advent record out. I don't know if you know them, but I think you'd be into them. Um, and as far as, like, classics, I mean, you got Charlie Brown Christmas. I, I, I don't know if I've taken that record off my record yeah, player this just, month. It's perfect. Uh, Bad Religion has a great yeah. Christmas album. So we, we didn't talk about that on the pod, I don't think, but, like... As far as punk albums go, it's like that Bad Religion Christmas record. When it came out, I was like, "What? I don't it, understand. How is this thing?" But it rules. So it rules. Well, yeah. And I think you're it, saying it's because it's like they're just like great melodies. And well, great it's songs. it's they're great melodies. They're great songs, and it to take those songs. If I had to pick one punk band that these classic Christmas hymns would work with, one hundred percent, it's Bad Religion. Yeah, because you layer in all those soaring background melody harmony things. They're, they're tight harmonies. Yeah. They work it's, perfectly. It sounds great. Yeah. It sounds amazing. It's not like, like winky it, or anything. No, it's just pretty no, it's not. straight ahead. It's, it's, and, and they don't like Greg Graffin's not like, let me just take all the Jesus stuff. No, right. they just, let's take yeah. like, let's, Sing about Christ the Lord, <laughs> right. and which is a little jarring. It's yeah, it's great, but it's still it's great, and it's nineteen minutes, yeah, and it just perfect. like they just blast through it. Yeah, you know, um, I'm super into it. Another uh, new punk uh, Christmas record, Goldfinger's new EP. Did you hear it? I about? haven't listened to it. It's yet. good, man. I like it? it. It's really fun. They um they do a Twelve Days of Christmas okay. where each each number is a different uh, genre. So five fun. golden rings is hardcore. So it's like five gold. <laughs> it's it's super fun. That's amazing. Um, and then yeah, I, I don't know. Jackson Five, Stevie Wonder. Those are classic Christmas albums. Um, the Muppets and John Denver Christmas really works for me. So anyway, I have a great um, affinity for Christmas records, and um, I love that NXPX has been doing this tradition for so long. And releases a Christmas song every year, and um, now we're going to talk about some of them. <laughs> yeah, we are. Thanks for that. I'm glad you. I'm glad sure. you brought that up. You know, uh, you know when we. Another thing to add to that, when Dana and I go put go get our Christmas tree, we put on ninety three nine Light FM oh, yeah. because <laughs> right after yep. right after Thanksgiving. 24 hours a day, <laughs> Christmas music, nonstop. It's on my, like, set stations in my car because of during Christmas time. Yeah. I'll put it on. So. Yeah. It's, I I also heard, I don't know if I talked about this on the pod, um, some study about how Christmas music, is like, makes people crazy. Oh, I, I, I heard the opposite. Really? <laughs> there was some headline that was like, People who are smart and experience joy love Christmas music or something like that. So here, here is what they're the it was, it was saying that because of the familiarity of Christmas music, the mental energy you have to use to not pay attention and huh. to not and to like to try and not focus on it, sure. it it makes it more difficult to pay attention, focus, and it's just like Interesting. I guess it. 
you expend mental energy trying to uh, not hear yeah, it or something. That's interesting. So whether or not that's legit, I don't know, but it's a thing. It is. <laughs> so, so, so let's shall we start back in the year of our Lord, 1998? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it. number one it's my number three all right this is yeah as i said the first christmas track of theirs i heard it's the first christmas track they did yep i've known it the longest and if i'm not mistaken i believe this is a uh uh cravac tune. tune sounds right 98 yep. would be right in his wheelhouse yep i love the keys love those keys yeah I mentioned on our Renesis, 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 the, the Renesis, Renesis, Renaissance, Ip. Ip, that, um, the opposite and gray skies. Yeah. I love those keys sounds. Mm-hmm. And the first time I heard it was here and I was like, Oh, they should do this more. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's a big part of it for me, but, uh, yeah, the song still rules 20 years later. Yep. Yep. And that's why it's on my, in my top three. Mm-hmm. Christmas only comes once a year At least that's what I hear And once it's gone What do you think about this one? Um, it's kind of flat. Yeah, it's it's probably my least favorite of the entire collection. <laughs> yeah, I gotta yeah. say, this is Christmas only come once a year, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a little boring. It, it's it's a little boring. Uh, I think there's is it maybe some toward a little toward the end. gets better there i think i think some of these songs take a while to yeah. to take off it's but it's, it's still it's a little boring uh yeah i they could have gone faster and i would be yeah. okay with that <laughs> yeah agreed um moving on to 2000 year 2000 in the year 2000 <laughs> Uh, did you notice anything in the production? It doesn't sound as good. <laughs> this is because Steve Kravak is no longer working with the band. <laughs>
so this is the like most 2000 you could <laughs> if someone just played this for me and told me what year was this recorded 100 <laughs> percent, it's the year 2000 yeah because it sounds like they produced it in the clubhouse because <laughs> yeah. they did record it and produce it in the clubhouse. Right. It sounds like the Renaissance EP. The sounds chord like progressions bones. sounds ever passing moment. Sounds like ever passing moment yes. for sure. Yep. Uh, I really like the the chorus and the melodies of the chorus. Yeah, I like it too. I have all those things in my notes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. It feels did, of that era. Yeah. It's uh, super long for them. Did, yeah, I was going to ask, did you also include that they could have cut off at least yes. a minute? Because yes, they, I, I the end is just this for like a minute and a half. <laughs> Which is fine, but too much. Kravak would not have let that fly. I 100% <laughs> say it's funny going from Kravak to this how long and unfocused yeah. the songs got <laughs> that Kravak would have been like no we're we're making this song uh three minutes and 20 seconds yep. rather than you know almost five minutes it's long too long people it's super <laughs> too long, long. They, maybe they were going for their Christmas epic this year. Could be. You know, it was the turn of the century. They're feeling ambitious. <laughs> that Y2K was coming, so they wanted to get <laughs> yeah, it all They're out. like, we got to get all of our long content out because the computers are going to erase everything. You got to get a, you know, got to invest invest in this new internet thing. Right. The internet bubble burst definitely won't happen. Nope. Make all of our money. Right. Uh I love Without the Proclaimers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Light the candles. It gave me hope. Stop the fire. It comes set next to me. All I really need this Christmas. Where's the So there's there's a lot going on in this song. <clears throat> it feels like three songs. Mm. Does it feel so good that it's your number two? It doesn't. <laughs> it does for me. <laughs> it's there. There are parts about this song that I really like. Yeah. Uh, those little <laughs> those guitar flourishes uh -huh. are so out of place. Oh, I'm I'm so into it. They feel they doesn't feel like they even belong in the song. I like it, that it's like these weird cowpunk psychobilly riffs into verses, and then the verses are like hard, yeah. and then the choruses are like catchy. I'm just yes. into it. It takes me on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It does take. Maybe maybe it, it'll uh, take me time to to, to fully uh, to, appreciate to adjust to it. But also in addition to the obvious. 500 miles vibe I love that we both beginning. made the same joke at the same time <laughs> Well that's because it's very When I wake up <laughs> uh, So So this was written If we were to assume since it was released In 2001 that it mm -hmm. was written in 2001 this would be Around the time he married Holly mm, He wants some Holly Yes so light the candles and get me Holly yeah. So yeah, it's, it's I a, think it's a, a double meeting. Winky, winky. Yeah, little double meeting. It works. And shout out to our boy Mark, Mike Carrera for making a <laughs> clever AF uh, little uh, pun there. That's right. Um, those bells at the end. Come on, those bells though, <laughs> bro. Yeah, man. I'm a sucker for Christmas bells. Yeah. It sounds great. Uh, I just wish <laughs> I think they... there's too much going on. I think there's a little bit going on. It 
you know, they, they cram a lot into a, you know, two minute and 50 second song or whatever it is. Yeah. I just, those, it's those flourishes to me. They, they, they just are a little jarring. Sure. They're definitely jarring. Yep. Uh, 2002, bro. She was an American girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than the clear Tom Petty yeah. American Girl uh-huh. uh, rip off there at the beginning, he's singing really high. He is, yeah. He sounds good. He's, I mean, normally these sorts of things would be like given to our boy Tom, right? But I'm, I don't know if I'm curious if Mike thinks he'd be able to pull off <laughs> singing that high. Still, I don't know. It sounds pretty good these days. It's um, true. Um, yeah, I think this one's really fun. Christmas party, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's lightweight. Yeah. But I like it. It's a little long again. <laughs> um, this this th- so speaking of uh, uh, jarring moments and Christmas songs. I like it. You know, as you do in your Christmas (laughs) socks. I support Screamy Mike, uh, whatever season of the year it is. (laughs) Just want a meal on it. Yep. Just, you want, you want Dark Mike and Screamy Mike. Best Mike's, as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) Um, You know what's even better? What's that? Zombie fighting Mike. So music, musically, I'm really into it. Oh, my gosh. Everything-wise, I'm really into it. It's my number three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, uh, We are six songs in, and I blew through my whole yeah, top you three. Did. Uh, it's very silly. It's very silly. It it makes sense to me because when, you know, I look at the kind of, like, we're, zombie craze has been going on for quite some time now, but when I think about when that might have started uh 28, 28 days, days later, later yeah. came out in two in late 2002 yep. so i bet mike was like shit <laughs> it's too late for me to get a new song out uh maybe i'll do he's like i gotta do this for 2003 i gotta have a zombie christmas yeah. song in 2003 i support it it's uh it's also funny because it's like okay so they put out two christmas songs in 2003 which we'll get into with our next one but i think it's because I mean, I was surprised, like, okay, so 2003 is before everything and after. Right. Um, I wouldn't necessarily expect them to be singing about zombies and doing basically, like, kind of a hardcore song. Right. But the other song is a little more before everything after. So this one, both of them were on the punk rock Christmas collection that came out in 2009. Right. But this one was also on the A Santa Cause, It's a Punk Rock Christmas comp. So maybe that's why it feels a little different. But... Yeah, I'm super into it. I'm super into the idea of a Halloween song at Christmas. Uh, yeah, it feels a little misfitsy. The whoa, like I yeah yeah. I'm, I'm I really do into this. I do like that. Uh, that the woes. It sounds. It it doesn't sound. It's the most like yeah. To your point, the most opposite sound for 2003 <laughs> MSPX. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
So this is Christmas, but there's no snow outside. It's not the way that I remember what happened to what he December was. So this is Christmas. I don't have much work to give. This is Christmas. Find it in your heart to forgive. This to me sounds like ever passing moment era. Yeah. 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 It's not quite before everything. Um, a little too fast for that, but it's just, I don't know. It's okay. In my opinion. I, I like it actually. Like it? Okay. I like it too. It's, you know, not my top three. Sure. But it's, I still think it's better than, um, some. Sure. As in, Guys, I really, really don't feel like singing today. Is this the Ramones? <laughs> I got a sore throat and a runny nose. I'm so sick from my head to toes. My brain is mush, my body aches, my fever's high, and I got the shake. It's Christmas and I am sick. My head feels like a brand. Andrew's giving me the thumbs down <laughs> signal throughout that song. I think it's okay. I kind of like, I kind of get it after like 30 seconds, you know, I'm like already sick. I got it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I like this. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I support that. I'm into it. But yeah, overall, this song is not, uh, as, as we say, uh, <laughs> uh, do I do you have my note in here, John? Oh, I can't see it for Christmas and I'm sick. What does it say? Meh. Yeah, I have. It's okay. Yep. Um, do you think he was actually sick, or do you think he's like this is gonna be a good bit? <laughs> he's like, you guys, I got a great bit about it was Christmas and I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, I think I think as the years went on, uh, Mike started like trying to phone it in. <laughs> um we got a lot of years left. Well, I think I think that's when, you know, when he he early on he's like writing these sort of grand yeah, Christmas yeah. conceptual right, things. Right. And then eventually he's like, and, I guess I'm sick. And he's like, and how about in two thousand five I just like talk about two thousand five. Talk about two thousand five and like two thousand six, fucking there's like I guess we did that and <laughs> So we just like, yeah, like sure. what, what did we do today? All right. that we had this year was with the president. Then we went to South by South and played under some tents. Made a record called it Panic Figures. Would you happen? Three weeks at the clubhouse with our producer Gap. Christmas is coming up soon. November, but I thought it was June. Every single year seems to fly right by, and that's why I'm writing this tune. It's 2005, and I'm still alive. It's 2005, and I'm still alive. I, th- I think it's an interesting. S- Sort of retrospective. I have interesting snapshot of Band's year at the time. Yep. So. Um, also, the the truest lyric in there is that they wrote a record, called it Panic, and they think it's worth us having. Yeah. I agree. I th- yeah. At first I was like, does he mean like having a panic attack? Like, is that what he was worth no. having? But that's not what he's talking about. <laughs> he's like, hey guys, why don't you uh, just freak the fuck out? <laughs> For um, no reason. Little Gabby Mac shout out there. 
Yep. Our producer Gavin. Uh, it's 2005. Oh my God. <laughs> so can I? This is this is what we this is what we deal with at all times. Um, just like look at all of my notifications right now. <laughs> Lots of Danny stares. <laughs> <laughs> Got a voicemail What's up, guys? Getting, getting texts Put Dennis Colin You know Miss you <laughs> This is Google translating Yeah uh, Once again um, Can I tell you While we're on the topic My newest Favorite Danny Stairs uh, Voicemail Is uh, <laughs> We got this The other day Hey what's up dude It's Jordan It's dad <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny, Danny, Dad, Danny, Dad, Danny, Daddy. <laughs> Danny, Daddy. Dan, Danny, Daddy. I'm gonna call him my dad from now on. Jordan, <laughs> yep. my dad. Jordan, Mister, Mister Jordan, Mister Jordan, could, Dad. I'd like you, Dan, to start leaving voicemails by saying, "This is Danny Stairs under the stairs." <laughs> Jordan, your dad. <laughs> Just go through all your titles. <laughs> Our lawyer. Yes. Um, until we until we replace you. <laughs> okay, what song are we on? We are uh, moving into 2006. What, 2006. A MIDI throwback. Into it. It started on a Monday. It hit me on Sunday. The snow started coming down. The kid is up to ask us if we wanted all this white stuff on the ground. Walked out my door and got a snowball in the head. So now it's war and all the neighborhood kids are dead. It's the late, great snowball fight of 2006. Best line. What does he say? I've got my bag of tricks and it's full of snowballs. <laughs> yeah. It's, he's a stinker. <laughs> he's also going to murder the neighborhood children. Yeah, yes. Um, Just fuck those kids. This is a top three contender for me. It's fun. Really fun. I love that 8 bit opening, as we were saying. Yep. And then around the bridge, these jingle bells kick in and stay in for the rest of the song. I'm into those. Well, they also, the, uh, the, all the different people involved in the snowball fight. That's right. Into it. Urinator. The urinator, he's throwing balls. Tommy gun, he's Tommy gun. throwing balls. balls. The leprechaun is throwing balls. Grimy Richard is throwing balls. Tommy Rat, he's throwing balls. Sticky Bean, he's throwing balls. Holly kids are throwing balls. The I'm He's the H-bomb H-bomb with some refs there uh, Shout right. out to Grammy Richard <laughs> uh, Poking Edge podcast host Yep I can only assume by this time next year He'll say Andrew and John Doing a different theme song with me <laughs> I assume <laughs> We can we can only assume yeah. uh, uh, So there's I was trying to look up Throughout this Uh uh, research of this episode and uh, some of you might be saying um, what research uh, I, <laughs> I found some the late great snowball fight of 2006 lyrics and by that I mean quote unquote lyrics and my favorite are the uh, <laughs> the some of the names that <laughs> they think Mike is saying <laughs> for, for grimy Richard, someone has it as gummy Richard. <laughs> gummy. He loves G- his gummy bears. He's all about the, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he says stinky Pete, right? <laughs> Isn't that what I thought the, yeah, no effects guy was named. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that um, was in my head subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, and then, when he says, I'm the H-bomb, I'm throwing balls, this person thinks he he said, on the 8 farm? Yeah, I love the 8 farm. <laughs> Classic Christmas destination. Classic, yep. Yeah, that's where I get my Christmas trees. <laughs> gotta get my Christmas trees on the 8 yeah, farm. The old 8 farm. On oh, the old 8 farm, throw those balls. Mm-hmm. Growing those 8s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a fun one. Yep, yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, uh, so now it's you know war and all one? the neighborhood kids are down. That is not what he says. <laughs> no. What 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 else is what else is fun? Uh moving in 2007. Oh shit. Uh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> shit. I 
feel like we need to listen to this whole thing. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is a yippy little dog with a diamond collar on wearing Louis Vuitton. All I really want is some real estate. I'll take from Rucker, Santa, to the Golden Gate. All I want for Christmas is my own private island. Island, island, island. So all I want for Christmas is everything you got. So went to your pockets, I don't ask for a lot. Yeah, all I really want is a movie screen. Man, you. <laughs> Shit. It's not real green. It's just what I need. It's Christmas. Cause all I want for Christmas is another one to me. <laughs> to do all my work so I can watch TV. And all I really want is a mansion in the sky. Where I... <laughs> that way it's a heaven. Talking about journeys, I've really gone on a journey with this song. Me too. At first I was just like, oh my god. So silly, but like I support it. And just now listening to it, <laughs> which happened, it, by the way. It only it only took another <laughs> Several seven years. Yeah. Seven years. <laughs> um, and then I was like, no, it's fun. And now I'm like, is this my favorite song on this? <laughs> it's so fun. It is. It is really fun. I... Uh, part of me is like, my my dudes are not the Beastie Boys. I think they know that. And but, and here's uh, the thing: yeah. like this is the journey that I went on with the song, <laughs> like because, uh, 2018 Andrew heard "Give Me Christmas," uh-huh. so you know this is this is this is like <clears throat> this couldn't be. Any more winky winky Mike. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't he can't wink any harder without like puncturing his eyes somehow. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, I mean this is this was secret weapon year. They're in that that mold. Yeah. Um I'm, but I mean against my better judgment, I'm just super into it. Like it's it's a little cringy. That's my style. Especially this stuff. I'll be here for a while. Until this. You're <laughs> This is the best part, though. <laughs> Your little dog got the diamonds on. <laughs> I should have put, uh, I should have put some diamonds on Harriet tonight for <laughs> yeah, you should. this episode. Little who Harry's got the diamonds on. Um, no, she didn't. <laughs> we are entirely in Mike's delivery corner for the song, obviously. <laughs> yes. Um, I have to also shout out again. Tom, he's my dude. Love yes. him. But the from the to the couldn't be <laughs> less enthusiastic. He he tried to scrape up a couple fucks, <laughs> but he couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't find any. I mean, yeah, he was fresh out. They're channeling Beastie Boys, like you're saying, and Run DMC, like Christmas Time in Hollis, which is a classic Christmas song. But for those for a Run DMC kind of song, you need to be like from the to the yeah. And he's like from the to the. Which is fine. Um, <laughs> when we get to the remix, I think that gives that section a little more uh, oomph behind it. Um, also, shout out to him saying, you like pudding at the end of the song, which is uh, the beginning to a filthy joke. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Maybe he said it already. Uh, there he is. You just heard him go, pudding. Oh, show me some of that sweet, sweet. <laughs> Okay, so it's the setup to a filthy joke, which is you like pudding. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be putting my dick in your whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how the joke goes. And I'm just like these dudes were on tooth and nail at the time, yeah. <laughs> throwing in a <laughs> filthy joke. I mean, that's the dirtiest thing uh, Mike has ever referenced I think, on on record. Song. That is. Um, we should also shout out the video, <laughs> which is yep. again very fun, but so cheap. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. I really think this could have been like great. Like if they would have done it, kept it silly, but like a little bigger. If our brother Brian, if our brother Brian Bouchard <laughs> were to direct um, it, perhaps he so could have. So uh, I think we need to 100% get our boy Brian Bouchard to get the dudes to come back out yeah. to to Indiana 
Go yep. back, get to the airport. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got their, they can drive up in a, in like a black car. Sure. You know, get out like slow motion, like yeah. walk up to the, like a private plane or something. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I don't know, like that, that'd be, that'd be pretty, yeah. that'd be pretty I support awesome. It. CJ Funk, if you've got a Give Me Christmas uh, <laughs> video pitch in yeah. you, let us yeah, know. Yeah, let's it's, um, hit us up with your, with your, uh, what's it? What's it called? I'm not a. I'm not a writer. When you have treatment. A, a treatment, yeah. there we go. Uh, yeah, give us your "Give Me Christmas" treatment, and then we can pitch it to our boy, uh, Bremerton Bride 2.0, or the H bomb, or the H bomb, or the urinator. Uh, Tommy Gun. Tommy Gun. He's from the to <laughs> the <laughs> song about Christmas. Two thousand. <laughs> And cut. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> okay. This has, uh, we haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm not going to listen to the whole song. This song has uh, a handful of references to songs yeah. past. They kind of go through all their old songs, I think. Well, a lot, yeah. Well, at least The Living Dead, mm-hmm. uh, Sick, 2005, yeah. Snowball Fight. Those are the ones that I caught. Yeah. Um. <laughs> This is a top three candidate for me. I really like it. I think it, it's really interesting. It, it's musically. one of the it's one of the songs I feel like actually sounds kind of like a Christmas song. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if that. they threw in, if they threw in a lot more bells or something. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, zombies. That chord progression on the chorus feels very like Weezer-y to me. Where it's okay. like, I'm super into that. Um, you uh, you may have wanted the harmonies to stop, but I love that they just keep going until they're screaming. <laughs> yeah, they just they just like because I think it 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 those it just it's pretty wild. Yeah, that's usually where a song yes, and then it goes like twelve times more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe some of these songs will grow on me over the years. Could be. They're very. I mean, a lot of them are very silly, and I just They're feel very like silly. I'm and here this for is it. and this is maybe maybe this is this is the tension that I deal with. The the I uh, I struggle with the the silly Winky MXPX. Ones. Lots of winkers in there's, here. There's lots of winkies. <laughs> okay, so John, where do we go from here? Because we have a lot of 2009. We do, which is because this is when Punk Rock Christmas came out. Um, so the song Punk Rock Christmas was technically the 09 song, I believe. Okay, so why don't we do that? Let's do it. Get downtown, you ride the bus now. Living on the wet side, you've been 
I think it's okay. <laughs> what do you think? I I like it. I think it's my number two. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> so here's what I'll say. I mean, the na 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 into it are super catchy into the na na nas into the na na nas. I think the breakdown that happens is really cool. This this to me sounds like left coast punk. <laughs> yeah, there there are some too. elements, especially you run up like the repetition. Sure, like yeah. uh. I feel like this could be yeah. It was right around the it same sounds, time. It sounds it sounds as good as yeah. The I wonder Left Coast Punk EP. They might have even recorded this song with those sessions. It's right around the same time. Because it's it's up there with December in terms of like some of their best some of the best sounding production. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's just kind of it doesn't like reach that extra level of like doesn't switch out of the gear enough for me or something. You need but some, you need some, uh, <laughs> I need like 12 <laughs> harmonies on top of each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need, uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely like it. It's, um, but, uh, yeah, I think maybe I need to spend some more time with it. Some more. No, no, no. I need, I need to spend some more time with, with, Okay, I was like, why are we going back there again? Because <laughs> I need to spend more time with it, bro. Well, we will in a little bit. Yeah, we will. Uh, uh, okay, so what's what's the next 2009? Right. So Old Lang Syne, also released on Punk Rock Christmas. <coughs> Should all the greatest be forgotten Never brought to mind Should all the greatest be forgotten Days of Old Lang Syne Lyrics that nobody actually knows to the song, but we'll all we'll all try and sing yeah, it yeah, yeah. on New Year's Eve. Well, no, a cup of cheer, uh, <laughs> um, something, something forgot. Uh, uh, so. um, yeah, this fits in the mold of kind of the bad religion style songs we were talking about, yep. where it's like yep. it's really fun, it's fast, it's not mind blowing, <laughs> like it's not like reinventing the song for me, but I like it. I'm I'm into it. Agreed. Yeah, uh, I still think it's fun. I like I like the brevity. Yeah. Uh, would we gonna do Cole questions? Yep, those are the bonus tracks for Punk Rock Christmas. Let's do Cole. think of that song uh you had a note earlier that you made me read <laughs> which was meh which was my reaction to both this and the next song i just i feel like i know why they're bonus tracks yeah they don't really do too much for me they don't offend me but uh <laughs> um questions i don't know what to how to process this song <laughs> This is a really weird song. I think I think this 
this might have been the m- moment like Mike's like just gonna <laughs> just just questions w- whatever comes to mind magnets how do they work <laughs> fucking magnets bro <laughs> Um, yeah, I never thought about actually how silly it was until you <laughs> looked at me during that part where he's like, like recycling. <laughs> You're like, what the hell are you even talking about, dude? That, that, that classic <laughs> Christmas conundrum. <laughs> Monsters, like, what's you know, going on here? I yeah, I don't know. This one's, this one's pretty silly. This is very, very silly. <clears throat> All right. Then you got your punk rock Christmas seven inch. That's what she said. <laughs> Christmas girth. <laughs> Christmas um, girth. And uh, we got acoustic demos here for two songs. Let's see. What do you want? You want the punk rock Christmas acoustic? Punk rock Christmas. Yeah. Oh, you were just playing all four tracks from the record. I see, I see. Yes. I feel like, um, are you recycling? <laughs> like recycling. Uh, I feel like there's not a lot gained by an acoustic version of this, but <laughs> it's fine. No, it's fine. <clears throat> um, How about some Christmas Day? Let's hear it. See, I like that harmonica in there. She waits and prays because it's almost Christmas Day. His voice sounds so different these days. It always goes such a long way because there's something about the way you spent your Christmas. Something about the way. That's what she said. <laughs> that holiday <laughs> seven inch. <laughs> I think this works a lot better as a as an acoustic version than um, punk rock Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. These are just demos, but um, yeah, yeah. If we saw Mike do a December show and he busted this out, I'd be super into it. Yeah, a little harmonica in there. Not a problem. No big. No, I wouldn't have any. Wouldn't complain. Clearly, "Gimme Christmas" is the only Christmas song I truly want to see live. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I want I want Yuri Diamonds oh my gosh. doing his little dance. If, if we redid our list of live songs, I would have to throw a bonus <laughs> "Gimme Christmas." Gimme Christmas, yeah, so satisfying. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. Nope. Should we move on to Santa Claus? Uh, snowed in. No. Uh, oh, 2009 still. Yeah, yeah. The song that I didn't remember earlier. I feel like I should be on a beach somewhere. The beach sucks now. It does. I'm sorry I did not give the cackler proper credit for singing this earlier because it's super fun. Yeah. And I love that he sang it for the Christmas app. Uh, it's not really doing too much for me. No, I, I like think, Mikey Moen a lot, but. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's, he was too busy with a dick to cry on and <laughs> yeah. coming in from kicking heads in right. uh, to. To participate in this. Yeah. It it's just a, also, yeah. I feel like I want to shout out uh, 
some of the neutral boy yeah. album titles because more. in addition to in addition to the um <laughs> those song titles mentioned you know aforementioned songs you know, uh you're an asshole man you know <laughs> you're an asshole man uh, i'm gonna but, make a song about that <laughs> Um, their their four uh, albums, everybody dies, <laughs> random acts of sexual violence, oh boy, weapons of mass seduction, sure, and we all come here to die. But I, I, uh, I don't care. Yeah. I, I stand for Mikey Moen. Yep, and he has this song called "Nice Guys Suck in Bed." <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I, he's got an up on the My Career Pod. I haven't yeah. listened to you. He's, I got to check that out. Oh, oh yeah, I have not heard that. I get him on the pod. He's my new. He's my new goal. Yeah, he's. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah he's, I did, there's there there are uh, th- these are pretty great titles. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun enough song. I like that they threw it to him to just do the whole thing and just yep. called it a day. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't move me in the way of some other Mike Moen performances in the past, but it's fun enough. Agreed. Agreed. 2010. We have Snowden. Snowden. Not Edward Snowden. <laughs> I thought that's what this was about. Yep. Got my white elephant gift all wrapped up With a carton of nog And my big rubber boots on Let's sing some Christmas songs I was supposed to be there The duty of a good friend But the wind was blowing It started snowing The power went out Now I'm staying Snowed in. Also, the Hanson Christmas album, of course, from 1997, mm-hmm. which I purchased <laughs> nice. back in. Are you a Hanson head? I I got down with Middle of Nowhere. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was a. Uh, they are very talented singer songwriters, yeah, and musicians. they have a cover of oh god, what's his name. The oh, ain't no sunshine. Uh, okay. They they do do that that Bill Withers song. I know, I know, I and it sounds fucking good. And you should check it out. I will. Uh, but we're, this is the MXPX podcast. This is not handling Hanson, which is like I feel like we could come up with a better title than that. Yeah, but uh, uh, that's yeah, coming we'll, out next we'll year. Pod. <laughs> that that's way better. Oh, man. Every time you suggest a great pod name, I'm like, that has to exist, right? Somebody's done this. <laughs> uh, so find us on patreon.com slash uh, <laughs> uh What Snowed are we talking about? Okay, Snowed, Snowed In. Snowed In. So I think it's okay. I, the chorus is my favorite part. I like the chorus a lot. Makes me look like a girl. Up like a guy. The weird, the weird, the words are weird. There's a lot going on. He's got rubber boots and a carton of nog. Yeah. Um, this, this is, this is a. Uh, this is not woke. No, this is Mike. this is Mike's vocab corner pretty much throughout this entire record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just like some words that he drops that are like, you know, even though uh, the like punk, recycling. even though punk rock Christmas is is in my top three. Starting off a punk song, it's like it's a. You're on a budget. You know, I think starting off is like you're on a budget. It's like that's he's setting the scene. I know. Punks don't have a lot of money. That's true. Uh, yeah. Do punks have budgets though? <laughs> no, that's true. Break out your checkbook. <laughs> Break out your checkbook. <laughs> Put the categories right. Uh, Gotta check it against the bank statement from last month. <laughs> Keep it balanced. 
I okay. So this is the time when we should also shout out that 2010 Tumble Down did Run Run Rudolph, uh, mm-hmm. which we're not going to play, but I will say it it's exists. okay, uh, fun, but nothing uh, revelatory to me. It was on the No Sleep Christmas Comp. Mm. Uh, now we get to a stretch where I'm not really sure if there were any Christmas releases for yep. 11, 12, and 13. Correct me, PXPX Nation, if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, I yeah. Don't... I mean, from the what we got sent to us, um... did a lot of did a lot of googling. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. Yeah, from what we got sent to us, I didn't. And what we could find, I did not see anything from those years. But 2014 was oh, a momentous shit. year. Because Gimme Christmas was so good. Ooh, oh, God. They had to remix it. Christmas is a yippy little dog with a diamond collar on wearing Louis Vuitton. <laughs> All I really want is some real estate. I'll take from Rucker, to Santa, to the Golden See, sounds better there. All I want for Christmas is my own private island. island, 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 island. So all I want for Christmas is everything. <laughs> I've kind of into this. Your brothers, I don't have for a lot. Yeah, all I really want is a movie screen. I love you so much. Christmas is the best of everything. It's not really great. It's just what I need. Is that T Pain on the? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the video is great. There's like a mic vacuuming while Mike is on the couch. Um, <laughs> do you think so they? Do you off. think they did? Uh, the reason they did this is because the Seahawks did win the Super Bowl. Oh, that could be. That could be. I mean. <laughs> When was the last time Mike skated? Went to the skate park. Too busy watching his budget. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Recycling. <laughs> um, it, uh, yeah, I, I think they maybe did it because it was like they recognized that song is great and they wanted yeah. to do a more polished version. Give me some. <laughs> some of that. <laughs> it definitely sounds better. <laughs> 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 Yuri, is there anything in particular you want? Your <laughs> <laughs> little dog got diamonds on. Um, oh, yes, man. it definitely sounds better. It, there are some elements that sound better, but I did. I do like the the double clip. time. I do like the clarity of the damn in the in the older <laughs> in the version. Yeah, yeah. I, plus, I really miss the the original's chorus where it kicks into like a double time, like yeah. actual punk sounding song. Yeah. So I like both versions, uh, <laughs> but I do I do like the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that part is great. Oh my gosh! I this I, I'm this song is growing on me know, every with time. each with each listen. <laughs> it's pretty great. Yeah, I I wonder. I want to know what people <laughs> when it, it when it came out yeah. in 2007. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what PX people right. were like. Were they were people like, aha, this is ridiculous. This is funny because this is like one of the only music videos they've done for, <laughs> for any Christmas yeah, song yeah. I that think I it's could the only find. One. Yeah, I mean, with the exception of the, the Decem- sort December of sort of yeah. video. <laughs> Uh, um, this is the only one that actually has their real faces in it. And I can't believe we've never seen it. Like, yeah, it seems like I, something we should have known it, about. Uh, for real. Yeah. I mean, I was so far off the MXPX radar at this time that I feel like if I would have saw this, I would have just been like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. But like now I want to watch it every day. <laughs> <laughs> he really bites the hell out of that, uh, chain he's got on in the video. Yeah, he does many times. <laughs> Um, like okay, like <laughs> I like pudding, Mike. And he, uh, and he uh, <laughs> got the the echo on there too. Yeah, he really that's, wanted that's, to that's, <laughs> uh, 
got to got to make sure everybody knows about the pudding. That's right. Okay. We got 2015 Christmas on a Friday. I like that little bass there. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, Legionnaire made a music, sort of a music video with this, huh. like going house to house, like giving shots to people to like, it, like dressed up as Santa. Okay. Uh, like. Hey guys, Joe Moxley here. You know, it's um, that tough time of year where it's with the holidays. Um, love- and they like. We're like, yeah, we'll make a donation to something if you take this shot of Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So it's like, hey, I'm uh, I'm just giving you alcohol. Drink this. <laughs> I mean, and one woman's like, oh, it's the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live that rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, uh, but she eventually is like, yeah, give me the Jaeger. Give me it to me. Yeah, but um, uh, Christmas on a Friday was playing in the background while they were giving people alcohol in the afternoon. Nice. I, uh, I mean, he talks. He talks about drinking his weight in booze. So makes, makes sense. sense. Uh, yeah, the song's okay. Doesn't really go anywhere for me. But uh, no, it's no. Fine. Um. Uh, so let's let's talk. Uh, let's talk New Year's Eve. Let's do it because. This is, I mean, is it MXPX or is it just it's Mike Solo? Yeah, not not a common thing. Yeah, it's not. No. Uh, this also came out in 2015. Sort of Christmas, sort of holiday-ish. Yeah, holiday adjacent. Walk down to the water's edge, watch the tide come in. Sounds very contemporary, Mike. Think about yes. this life and the places you have been with plants so big and a love so strong, we can carry on. The remaining days grow dark, and all it ever takes is that last spark. Do you hold? The phone when you're alone. Two for two. Hold it to your rear and wish that I was there. (laughs) So you and I have been on the same page with so many of these songs. Two for two for jokes at the exact same moment. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that chorus is VV Wrecking Hotel Rooms. Yeah. Yeah, we sang over it, so just if you haven't heard this song. fuck with this song though yeah i'm into it i don't know what i think about it i i maybe it's because wrecking hotel rooms was like, a great song <laughs> was was my joint yeah i mean it's the song is really cool it's interesting it's <laughs> Man, just, i think it's just because like do you it's so much like wrecking hotel rooms i mean also we got to talk about the video did you watch that video i did and brian bouchel brian bouchel our boy brian doing uh with mike flipping through those He's looking at the photographs. Uh, that's a potograph that's looking, reference. That's our, <laughs> our podcast about Nickelback. Yeah, our Nickelback podcast that we will absolutely do. It'll only be about 
Just look at this song. photograph. We're going to go through each uh, line. Each line. Of the of song every week. Okay. <laughs> every week. <laughs> Three hours on just one line from uh, the... Look at this photograph. Now, what I think he's saying, who is me here? What, he doesn't even what say he's me. saying, <laughs> look. <laughs> well, is he talking about look? looking within? <laughs> As a society, how do we look upon? As a culture, when we look back at the picture <laughs> oh, of our Jesus. culture, what are we saying? <laughs> Yeah. Look at their bird, bird. How many, are we at three hours yet? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We, oh. Oh. How, how is this even possible? <laughs> We're only on song 97 and there's 200 more to go, so <laughs> we have a little while. Um, yeah, this is fun. It's an interesting, weird sort of little experiment. It's got I think the, it, do, do, yeah, it sounds do, great. Do. I love the drums. It's got the, um, the four on the floor mm-hmm. drum, beat, drum beat going. I'm into it. See, that's Mike today. Killing it. As we say goodbye, New Year's Eve. I like this. New Year's Eve. I'm telling you. I just want it to be a blast. I'm telling you. I'm just there. Okay, so what he needs to do is just embrace that. Yeah. And he should play that song. He needs to go jump into a pool, <laughs> make. <laughs> An ugly girl, attractive because she gets Throw naked. Off her glasses. Yep. That's... Um, no, they should play this song during holiday shows, and then for the chorus, just play "Wrecking Hotel Rooms" like everybody wants them to do. Yep. Um, uh, what they need to do is invite us to their New Year's <laughs> Eve party. Yes. And then we—that's all I want. <laughs> and that's it. That's, that's the end of my sentence. All I want for Christmas is to go to your New Year's party. 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 <laughs> All right. Damn. 2016? <laughs> yes. Another Christmas. Let's see where the fuck <laughs> is. Here we go. <laughs> Presents drawn about the floor. The stockings won't stay on the mats all day. See, I feel like I like Ernest Mike. Yeah. I like Ernest sure. like writing sincere sure. songs. However, I love Give Me Christmas. <laughs> he for, contains multitudes. He's he is a he's a fully formed <laughs> human being with many sides. Where he's like, I miss you, Holly. I want to be with you. And then he's like, y- y- you know, you want pudding? You like? <laughs> let me, That's how he proposed, I assume. <laughs> what, what's the joke again? <laughs> how about me pudding my dick <laughs> in you for the rest of our lives? <laughs> the, I like to think. I think he he started with putting this ring, putting on, your this ring on your finger, yeah. and then giving you the dick. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> Sorry, Herrera's. Um. <laughs> yep, Rhodes and <laughs> Rhodes and Sailor never listen to this episode. Oh, they love the show. Um, <laughs> They're huge fans of the show. My pot for life. That was an impression of a young child. <laughs> this song <laughs> begins the stretch of the oh last few God. years. Um, dark songs, uh, but I like the darkness. Like I think um, Harriet. <laughs> You're just ignoring me. <laughs> I'm, I'm ignoring you because Harriet has emerged in her Christmas sweater. Harriet, Harriet, what do you think about this kind of 
darker recent stretch of MXPX Christmas songs. She does not want. She's like, you've put me in this thing. I've made it clear I am not interested in being part of this. Okay. <laughs> she is not helping me out at all. This is, this is a great segment, though. Um, <clears throat> I am. I'm. Harry, do you need? Are you? Are you? Are you bothering us because you need to poop? <laughs> yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> We're almost done, Harry. A few more years. Um, <laughs> I think... Um, I was going to pick her up, but then I thought she would totes poop on she me. She probably won't do that. You can pick her up. Um, yeah, I think... I mean, it's funny that we talk a lot about how, you know, maybe whatever, 15 years ago in the sort of panicky era, he's in a real dark place. And lately he talks about gratitude and positivity and stuff. But I feel like these last few songs are pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, and which, this one... Which one are we... I'm just thinking of, like... Another Christmas, one week, December. They're all pretty, like, they touch on the darkness of Christmas, I think. Yep. Um, and I kind of like, I I, sh- I like the song, I should say. One week um, or? Another Christmas, I mean. But um, Oh, yeah, me too. It kind of acknowledges sort of the <clears throat> weirdness of Christmas as you get older, in a way, where it's kind of like another one's come and gone, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I know he's obviously talking specifically about, like, a romantic relationship, but it's just kind of like, yep, it came, and it's over, and another one in the rearview mirror. It kind of reminds me of um, the Pogues uh, Christmas song, The Fairy Tale of New York, which is one of my right, favorite Christmas right, songs. Right, right, it's right. kind of like Christmas is, it, like, it acknowledges the romance and the wonder of it, also, also like the sadness of it and how yeah. it marks those times in uh, relationships. So anyway. This is something I actually wanted to talk about that I was saving for talking about. December. December. Yeah, but we'll get there. Let's, uh, let's, hit, let's hit 2017. One week. It's brand. It's weird that they covered that for this. <laughs> Doesn't seem Christmassy at all. It's been <laughs> since I recycled. One week till Christmas. Did it come so fast? One week till Christmas. Let's hope it's not our last. One week. One week till Santa's on my roof. Squeezing down my chimney hole. And I know you all want some proof. But I don't want a lump of coal. No, I don't want a lump of coal. So I know he was going for the rhyme, but... <laughs> Chimney hole? Squeezing down my chimney hole? Um, hole? <laughs> a completely unnecessary word. I mean, unless you're like, hey, baby, you like putting, you want to squeeze down my chimney hole? Uh, His chimney hole? <laughs> yeah, sure. Somebody's chimney that's hole. How, that's how Mike gets down. <laughs> that's right. Hey, whatever, hey, whatever floats whatever, your chimney hole. Whatever. Um, I, yep. I think, uh, I like this one. It's... Uh, I really like the co. That's mm-hmm, fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, again, he's like one week till Christmas. Let's hope it's not our last. <laughs> like it's just pretty, pretty dark. You just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> Here is my counter to your yeah. your thoughts. <laughs> you're you're giving this like you know emotional like uh, dissection of the song. This is what he's talking about. Like, and I'm Let's just like. Uh, but more importantly. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's what I have to say. <laughs> do you like the song? Yeah, I do. I I like a stripped down acoustic yeah. song after a lot of diamonds. <laughs> after a lot of diamonds, uh, and you know the little dog with the diamonds on. But the I think I think having a song that's acoustic versus an acoustic version of a song. Yeah. I think that's I think that's makes yeah, it unique. Definitely. And in I mean their Christmas catalog. Right. Yep. You could probably make the argument like it's easier for him to record an acoustic song by himself. But I like it. I like I, yeah, there's something I like acknowledging the sadness of the season too, um which we were just talking about and I think having a kind of acoustic solo song uh is a good vein for that kind of thing. Yep. Um, all right, we we are caught up this year, new this year, December.
This is my number one. Oh wow! Okay, cool. It's it caps the year so well. It's dark MXPX. Yeah. It has Emily Whitehurst in it, and she's a goddamn angel. <laughs> I love any vocals that she contributes to yeah. anything that yeah. she's done. She's great. And it just, her vocals sound so clean on yeah. everything. And they just, it's just, and I said this on the punk rock acoustic or the, uh, the acoustic album, whatever collection, whatever the fuck's <laughs> called. And I said that her voice mixes so well with mics and she just sounds so great. <laughs> um, you like her a lot. <laughs> she, the, the spoiler alert. <laughs> We yeah. should get her on the pod. We should get her on the pod. Did you, uh, uh, we, we're to her? we're all doing we're doing Mike's podcast sloppy <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it's like, oh Brian, just did. Oh hey hey Jared, how about you want to? Hey Emily. Yeah. Did you listen to that one yet? Which one? With Emily. I did. Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard it yet. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Um, I haven't. I have. I'm. I'm a. I haven't heard the latest one with Feldy. No, I haven't either. I've got to check that one out. He's had a good run of guests. Um, yeah, he has. But the song rules. I agree. It was a definite top three contender for me. And it's also short. Yeah. And it, right. And good. the guitar, the guitar riff. It rules. Yeah. See, all it those sounds things. Sounds so great. All those things are perfectly in keeping with the self-titled <clears throat> record. Yep. Like it's dark, but yep. it is like um, you know, I don't want to say profound, but it's like mature. Yep. Uh, but it's, it's also, uh, the song is so real. The totally nothing is easy. Believe yeah. me, I've tried. Yeah. Totally. It is, it is my experience with depression and anxiety that like anytime, if any, anybody gives you an easy solution for depression or anxiety or, yeah. or, and they're just like, well, all you have to do is, uh, I've tried it. Right. <laughs> I've been down that road. Yeah. It's this, and I, this is, so we here at Magnified Pod, we like to have fun, but <laughs> there's something that I've been thinking about, like wanting to talk about for the past couple of weeks. And that's this time of year is not easy for a lot of people for a number of reasons, whether they don't have a uh, fond associations with family. Mm -hmm. They don't have a family they necessarily want to go home to, or they would like to, or they, and they can't because they're working or, um, for whatever reason, you know, we, John and I have a friend who just lost his father this week. You know, it's, uh, it's not an easy time of year. And I, I know time is running out for Christmas shopping and there's lots of traveling coming up, but, and as somebody who has worked many, many years in retail, um, but just in general, I encourage you to try and extend as much grace and patience to everybody you run into this time of year because... You don't know what somebody has going on, and chances are they've got something going on that's making this time of year difficult. So just keep keep that in mind when, you know, going to a Starbucks and ordering your latte and they, you know, mess it up. Or, um, you know, you run into somebody at the store and, you know, knock something over or whatever, just... Let's try and extend a little bit of grace to everybody. Well oh, said. Yep. Yeah, I think, I mean, again, he seems to be acknowledging mental health pretty frankly here. I mean, at least that's my interpretation of don't wait too long to decide your reasons why you feel nothing. Kind of yeah. like deal with what's happening sort yeah. of is what I take from that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, this is, this has been my year. Yeah. Back in back in therapy, trying to not push push those things down, push just push down the my my tendencies and and be like, hey, gotta it's time to deal with those things and yeah, 
I encourage everybody to do the same. Totally. This feels like a good year to do that. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, Um, So, John, uh, I forgot to tell you, uh, transitioning from these super heavy topics and finishing up these uh run of MXPX songs, I discovered... Another Andrew Phelan original yes. song, Christmas song from high school. That's right. My, uh, I can't wait to hear this. My song, It's Christmas Time. <laughs> Perfect. Um, from my album, You Were Running a Good Race. Ooh. What is that? Is that like a scripture reference? It, God damn right it is. <laughs> Paul, baby. It's, uh, I don't remember. Let's see. What was it? Romans, baby. Let me see. You Were Running a Good Race. Uh, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? Galatians, baby. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I, let's hear it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> is it is it you solo acoustic? It's solo acoustic. <laughs> so this was probably, I had to have been maybe 16. Okay. Is this, is this, this is pre-Andrew's party. <laughs> no, this is, I think this is post-Andrew's okay. party. Okay. Or maybe it's the same era. Same same sessions? <laughs> no, different sessions. I actually recorded this in my high school band room. Nice. And had someone help me. So you'll you'll actually hear a little bit of reverb on it. Okay. Uh but it I still sound like shit. I can't wait. Long intro. Yep. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you all. You go and trim the tree while I deck the hall. Solid. You can play the jingle bells while I play my guitar. Or you can play something else. <laughs> Just don't go too far. Solid rhyme. <laughs> We're all so happy now. It's a time of year. Let's all celebrate now. With eggnog and nut beer. <laughs> uh, it's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Do you want to know the reason for Christmas? Oh boy, I'll, I'll tell, tell you. <laughs> What's this holiday all about? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> What's the reason for it? That makes us scream and shout. When we exchange our gifts, I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> I'll tell you right here Big build up Yeah <laughs> I'll tell you why we scream and shout And drink eggnog and not beer It's about the birth of our Lord And a stable in Bethlehem Couldn't get room and board <laughs> Laid our Savior in a crib Savior sent for you and me Save all us girls and boys So I guess you can see <clears throat> Who cares about Christmas toys It's Christmas time It's Christmas time It's Christmas time It's Christmas time Final verse, people. Thanks for hanging in. <laughs> It's not about your stocking this year. Hell no. <laughs> or any of the last. Bunch out. It's not about Santa and reindeer. It's about Jesus' birth and the best. <laughs> Don't stop praising him. When those Christmas lights come down, don't you be sad and grim. And turn that smile to a frown. Jesus will return someday. Then you'll scream and shout. And you can look at him and say, I know what Christmas is about. 
It's Christmas. It's gonna be the first thing I tell Jesus when I finally read it. <laughs> I know what Christmas is about, bro. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna come back and be like, just one cr- one question, bro. What's Christmas about? And you're like, I got you, bro. <laughs> Got you. I know this one. Um, <laughs> that is incredible. Thanks oh, for sharing it. <laughs> That's not the word I'd use. It really makes you think. <laughs> now I, I feel like I know now what Christmas is about. Yeah, it's about eggnog and not beer. <laughs> not beer. For some reason. False. Um, <laughs> False. Did Lies. You, like, were you, maybe you've talked about this. You, you must have talked about this at some point. Yeah. It was like straight edge. Like, Was that part of your MO at that point? Um, in terms of, uh, what you wanted to get out there message wise? No, not really. I just want to throw it in there. Yeah. I, this sort of like, I was, I wasn't drinking anyway. I wasn't like being invited to parties (laughs) where people were drinking. So you're just bitter about it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just like, I don't know. I had this, I had this, uh, I don't know, this kind of teetotaler approach to, sure to Christianity, even though it's not like, like there were times I didn't even want my parents drinking beer. Sure. You know, just because I thought like, this is, this is wrong. This is bad. Alcohol isn't good or whatever. Yeah. You got to teach your dad the proper theology. <laughs> um, well, thank you for sharing that beautiful Christmas gift. Uh, Jesus. That's all you need to get me this year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're uh, welcome world. <laughs> It's good. You were trying to say, like, hey, you don't have to be sad just when the lights come down. That's good. There was um, this uh, Sesame Street Christmas record I had as a kid, okay. and the last song was Keep Christmas With You All Through the Year. Aww. And I really tried to do that because I got so sad when Aww. Christmas ended. I'm like, you know what? I can keep it with me. So now I'm going to keep the meaning for the season with me uh, thanks to that song. Um, <laughs> so that's been MXPX's and Andrew's Christmas songs. Uh, let's talk real quick about what made the final cut for the current Spotify EP, which is sure. Punk Rock <clears throat> Christmas, December, Christmas Day, You're the One I Miss, Late Great Snowball Fight, and Another Christmas. So how many, say your top three again? December, Punk Rock Christmas, Christmas Day. Okay, so all three of those are on the new one. Mine are... More plebe. <laughs> mine are Christmas Day, You're the One I Miss... And Christmas Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> so the last one is not on there. But I could have easily gone December probably yeah. for that one too. So I think I get why they made the choices they did for the current cut of songs. But it is fun to go through all them. And, uh, yeah, I, I love some of these songs. So yep. <clears throat> uh, this has been fun. Yeah. John, if people want to follow us or get in contact with us, what should they do? Then go ahead and uh, smash that follow button on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, rate and review us, if you would. Mm-hmm. Help us with those uh, ratings. And if you feel so moved in the spirit of Christmas to, to write a review, you, all the better. Subscribe, if you haven't yet, wherever you get your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? They can leave us a voicemail at 872-762-4763, 872-7-MAGPOD, or they can... Uh, Harriet is licking all of the glasses. Yeah. Um, they can send us a, an email at magnifiedpod at gmail.com. They can. And I Instagram. just want to say, yeah, well, we said Instagram. Did we? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> as we're closing out this year, yes. Just wanted to say whether you're a lemon head, a red rider, pink boy, or pink girl. Whether you live under our stairs or ranked Life in General number eight on your list of favorite albums, mm-hmm. we are so glad you're all Magpod for Life. Uh, yes. This year has been super fun. I'm grateful to you, Andrew, for having me join you on this beautiful journey. Oh, man. This, and, is, uh, this is our journey together. That's right. We've had a lot of fun. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, this, is, this, has been, this year has been bananas. Yep. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think this when I started this year that... This is, kinda, this is what we'd be doing. This is what with I'd a be lot doing. of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, listening to a lot of MXPX, talking to some really cool people, meeting some cool people. Yeah, um, some of whom um, don't blow. Um, <laughs> one of which does. Yep. Uh, yeah, and and grateful to you, John, to you know have me to your place weekly to record and 
kid uh, <laughs> with your busy family life to Amen. spend hours and hours recording <laughs> in, in your basement. So many hours. So many hours. Grateful to you, Harriet. Yes. For all your farts. Um, Harriet, do you have any final <laughs> any, thoughts? Any closing 2018 thoughts? Oh, that's a heartfelt thank you out there, listeners. Yes. So thank you, Harriet. Yes. Well, on our next episode, we're pretty sure we're going to cover Arthur when it'll be about time for a podcast at our house, and it wouldn't be the same without you. Merry Christmas, and join us, won't you? Is a yippy little dog with a diamond collar on wearing Louis Vuitton. <laughs> All I really want is some real estate. I'll take a rocker, Fella, Santa, to the Golden Gate. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is my own private island. So all I want for Christmas is everything you got. So went to your pockets, I don't ask for a lot.